Hi, Chef Bakili. Welcome to the National Critics' Choice Online News. Um, welcome Hi. to Singapore, and I heard that you are participating in Savor uh, this coming weekend. Uh, please tell us uh, what's life for you, you know, becoming a chef. You know, what and why do you choose to be a chef? Well, uh, hi, it was, uh, it's nice to be here. Well, uh, I become a chef uh, just because I was very, since, since I was a, a, a little kid, I was very related to arts. My mother, she's a painter, uh, so she encouraged me very, very hard to do some different types of uh, art. So at one point, when I was 16, I just uh, I was thinking what to do with my hands <laughs> and also with, with my mind, and I had a chance to to, to have a trip and, and, and meet some some chefs, some cooks, and I was I, I just I just gave a, a try and and I felt so so good since then and I, I said just to quit all my stuff and and just travel traveling and I'm going for a cooking school and since since I just uh, did the cooking school. I realized that I really love uh, staying in the kitchen and also traveling and learning about food. It's just, you know, um, uh, it's a process which I really like it. Who was the main influence you know, that actually you know, inspired you to be a chef? You know, was it uh, your family or, with, or it could it be your mentor? Well, it came before from my grandmother. Uh, she was an excellent cook. And I was just uh, looking up uh, her uh, all the time. She was cooking just amazing. And then um, when I went to, to a culinary school, I had a few a few chefs that really inspired me. They were uh, French uh, classic uh, technique. Uh, so um, and after that, I start to travel and I, I start to see different chefs. And I got the chance to, to work with. Uh, very old traditional chefs like André Saulnier in, in, uh, from France in, in New York. So he inspired me a lot. And then I had some other chance to, to, to work with different chefs like uh, Peruvian Gaston Acurio, uh, Santi Santa Maria from Spain. So I think um, I, I, I was very lucky to, to, to learn from, from uh, these greatest uh, chefs. Is there any one dish that your grandma cooks, you know, that you cannot live without till today? <laughs> yeah, of course. Uh, uh, the name is carapulcra, which is a very classic Peruvian dish. It's made out of um, dry uh, potatoes. So it's and actually it's very difficult to find here in Singapore uh, dry potatoes because they are actually dry, as I'm saying. And there's a stew of these dry potatoes with some meat, with some, with some meat, and some rice as a garnish. So this is a very comfort food, as 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 I as I can see here, the chicken rice maybe. Uh, this uh, is very similar. So this is it is something that really has I have in on my mind. And how how is it made? You know, could you share the recipe? Yeah, very easy. Just since the potatoes are dry, you have to soak them overnight. Then uh, on the side, you just chop a few onions chop uh, some garlic and just fry, make it make like a sofrito uh, with some olive oil and then after you, you fry these onions and, and, and garlic uh, you add some chili paste which is, has to be a Peruvian uh, chili paste made out from ají panca which is a panca pepper and then uh, we fry these um, chilies with these um, onions and, and garlic and then we add some cumin uh, and then we, we add the soaked um, um, uh, potatoes and once the potatoes are cooked you can add some type of meat or even you can add some seafood if you like so it's very uh, versatile, it's very flexible and then uh, it's very easy because you serve with, with, with rice oh, wow. so the name is cara pulcra it's a very traditional dish, it's very classic amazing and what do you have in store for several uh, this weekend in Singapore? Uh, we are we're doing um, an example of uh, three dishes, which uh, was, one is going to be a starter, a main course, and a dessert. Uh, dessert is going to be, I just want to conceptualize the, the, the whole um, idea of the chocolate in, in, 
or cacao in Peru. So I'm bringing cacao from Peru, organic cacao. And then the garnish is going to be whatever is around the cacao in the jungle. So you will see some fruits, some herbs, and the cacao is very bitter, 64% uh, uh, of cacao. And it's going to be like a ganache with some, some citrusy, some citrusy fr uh, fruits. Then the main course is going to be um, a stew of, uh, of a white fish. We found a nice Hollywood here and we're gonna make a, a stew of, of cilantro, coriander, with some pumpkin puree. And the starter, which I like, I like it very much because I love scallops. We're gonna do a, a scallops tiradito. Tiradito means a slice, the way you slice something. It could be fish, it could be any type of seafood. It has to be raw, raw, like sashimi, or even like carpaccio. But actually, the size of tiradito is between sashimi and carpaccio. You know, like it's not, it's not very thin, not very thick. And we have to marinate, but just for a few seconds, with a sauce called leche de tigre, which, the, if you translate, is tiger's milk. It's a citrusy, a citrusy sauce with some sweet potato. So, as you can see, potatoes are very traditional, are very common in Peru since we have so much variety of potatoes and we found uh, nice potatoes. We don't, we don't have to bring the potatoes from, from Peru. We found nice potatoes uh, from Malaysia and that's what we are using. And yeah, we have to play, you know, like a uh, proven concept of being, uh, using local uh, uh, products. What life lessons could you give, you know, so far, you know, for the next generation of chefs? Uh, uh, is there something that they can learn from you? Well, actually, uh, becoming a chef is, is getting uh, in some way glamorous, but it's not that way. I mean, we don't. Uh, the kids, the kids uh, must uh, stop thinking about uh, going on TV if they want to become chef. Maybe uh, we are cooks. We have to stay in the kitchen. Of course, we have to travel, we have to promote what we do, but we have to keep it uh, in a very humble uh, way because uh, it's all about passion, it's all about commitment, and we need to find, find our commitment because if we don't have inspiration from something, in my case, the inspiration is the, the nature. I mean, being ecological for me is kind of a nice commitment with my country, with my land, with my producers. So I think uh, for whoever is starting this uh, amazing uh, career uh, or lifestyle, uh, we have to find something that really inspires. And I think we have to take it uh, in a very pure state. What's your secret of your success? Now, what brought you here today? I think if we believe there is a secret, um, we won't have any success, or <laughs> if we believe there is success, I, will, I wouldn't be here. <laughs> uh, but actually, I think um, you have to be really hardworking and keep uh, motivated all the time. It's not always easy because sometimes uh, working long hours in the kitchen is not nice. I do enjoy cooking, but. Uh, Sometimes uh, you have to give 100% uh, of your time and actually sometimes you have to leave a few things, uh, free time, sometimes there's not. Um, but I think for having success is just to enjoy what you do and, and as I said, if, if I get a chance to, to find this commitment and inspiration, I just leave the inspiration just Fly and, and when I get this, uh, it feels nice and, and, and you can just uh, keep on. Chef, thank you for sharing with us here at the National Critics' Choice and we look forward at Savor this weekend. And folks, you know where to find uh, Chef? Uh, probably you have a Facebook or a website, could you share with us? Yeah, uh, it's uh, centralrestaurante.com, centralrestaurante.com, that's it. Well, so thank you, find, you. you find him. Yes, and thank you once again. Thank you.